Safety is definitely one of the most important aspects of working as a painter in the organization. We're going to be doing a lot of interior and a lot of exterior work that involves using ladders, involves working at heights, so we want to make sure that we have the appropriate safety equipment so that you're having a safe summer. A key aspect of that is using a fall protection system at various heights. WSIB and CSST regulations, the worker safety boards in various provinces or in Ontario and Quebec, would indicate that anybody doing painting work above uh, or ladder work above 10 feet should definitely be wearing a harness. So that means when we're doing higher up chimneys or dormers or some high up windows and soffits, we definitely want to make sure that we're using the fall protection system uh, to be working safely on the job site. So this fall protection system, harness and anchor and rope, uh, has five main components to it. Firstly, we have our harness. This is what goes around you and connects you to the fall protection system. We have our rope. We have our lanyard with shock absorber. We have a rope grab, and we have an anchor, and of course some nails or some screws to screw in or nail in the anchor. Let's start first with the harness. So to put on a harness properly, you're going to want to find the D-ring, which is the metal-like ring on the back, and take the yellow straps here, the orange straps here, and hold it up like that. That should illuminate to you your foot straps there, or your leg straps. So we're going to put this down, sort of walk into the harness. Very good, put these shoulder straps up here. Excellent. Now you want to make sure to remove most things from your pockets, things like keys or sharper objects that could you know, jab into your leg because these are kind of tight straps. And of course we've got to fasten our center chest piece here. And you, these are also buckles. So if you want to undo them to take a break or to get out of your harness somehow, you can always undo these straps and put it back on like that. Personally, I like to keep them on and just loosen them or fasten them and walk into my harness. Okay, you want to make sure these are tight. To loosen it, simply loosen it like that by moving the strap out and to tighten it, same way. These have sort of like a double lock mechanism to make sure that it's not going to slip once it is tight. But as a third safety measure as well, you have two bands here that you're going to want to bring tight to that buckle to ensure that it's not going to be moving around very much. Same thing here, you have your chest piece, this can be tighter or looser. And then you have your shoulder strap uh, buckles here. To tighten this one up a bit. Actually, it's probably pretty good. You want to be able to grab your D-ring and not move around too much in your harness. You don't want to have too much slack. So that's pretty good. Any, much, any more slack than that, I could be slipping out of my harness or something along those lines. So now that we have our harness on secure, we're almost ready to go up on a ladder. We just have to make sure the rest of our fall protection system is uh, well secured when we're painting, let's say, some third story soffits or some dormers that stick out of a roof over here. Um, so next we have our rope. This is our rope. It's a 50 foot cord, a 50 foot rope. At the end of that, we have a carabiner. This carabiner has a double lock mechanism so that you can't actually open it unless you push on the back first. So you push on the back piece and then you can open the carabiner on the front. This means that wind or a bird or some, uh, some other bad weather isn't going to damage the connection that you have from the rope to the top of the home. Now, this uh, carabiner can connect to two different ways to the home. It can connect to the roofing anchor or it can connect around a strong point such as a chimney or any other uh, strong fastening point that can hold at least 2,000 pounds. Things you don't want to wrap this around are a ventilation duct or something related to the heating or something that's a foot or two off the uh, roof because this isn't strong enough to support the weight. You have to have a strong point that can hold at least 2,000 pounds. So in that circumstance, we would take our rope, wrap it around the chimney for example, make sure it's well uh, in good standing in the chimney because sometimes they, they aren't. And of course, wrap it to itself, pull it tight, and then we'd be good to use our rope. Now the other mechanism we can use is the roofing anchor. So this roofing anchor connects to the roof and has a D-ring at the top here which the carabiner would then connect to. Okay, and that would be secure. So how do we properly fasten our roofing anchor? It's definitely a good question. Um, well, there's uh, the main way, there's two ways to do it. You can fasten it on a peak or on a flat area of the roof. Typically I would always recommend you put it on a peak like that. Uh, and you have either three inch screws or you have four inch roofing nails. 
Uh, and what you're going to do is go across the peak, or when I say you, one is going to do this. Typically, your production coach, franchise manager, or general manager will be responsible for setting up your more technical harness placements, especially when you're starting off as a painter in the organization. So don't worry if a lot of this seems uh, a little bit technical. As you gain experience, if you decide that you want to be someone who's going to be setting up some of this harness equipment, you can always uh, take proper training courses and learn to do that as well with us. So, we're going to go across the roof. A roof is basically uh, constructed of studs, then plywood sheeting, and then roofing shingles. So the studs of the home are spaced every 16 inches. So we're going to take a hammer and some nails up there with us. And as we go across the roof, we're going to want to nail into the studs. So how do we find them? Well, first what we're going to do is take our hammer and sort of tap along the roof. We'll go tap, 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 and you'll sort of hear a part where it's less hollow and you feel more resistance from the hammer. That's probably a good point to assume that we have a stud there. So we're going to put this on the peak, take our four inch uh, roofing nails, put it in uh, one of the holes and hammer it in. And right away you'll know if you have resistance or if you don't have resistance. If you have resistance and it's pretty hard to hammer, as if you're hammering into a piece of wood, well, you probably are. This means that you're nailing into a stud and you can feel free to put four bolts on each side. You always want to make sure to fasten it with four nails on each side so that this can support the appropriate amount of weight. Um, if you nail in and it goes in pretty easily, this might mean you're nailing in simply to tar or just to the plywood sheeting but not actually to a stud. This is not strong enough. So you're going to take the nail out and you're going to fill that with roofing tar, uh, the hole that is. Move it over, tap, 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 try again to find your stud. At the very end of the project, when we remove this with the uh, hammer, we're then going to take roofing tar and it comes in a tube, you know, in a caulking gun just but it's uh, black roofing tar and you just fill all the holes, you make sure they're sealed and now we're good to ensure that the roof is fastened, it's secure, and they're not going to have any leaks coming in there. So this is one way. Take your carabiner, clip it in there, and you're good to go. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, why don't I assume that this uh, here is a chimney, or it's a very strong point that I can set up my harness around, or my anchor. Okay. Good. So now how do we connect us, the harness, to the actual rope itself? Well, what we do is we first use a rope grab. This is what's going to connect the lanyard to the rope. Rope grab is probably one of the most important aspects of the harness. It's always important to be checking it and ensuring that the bolt is tight and that the latch is closed. So to put it onto the rope, I open the latch, I unscrew the bolt, and I see a little arrow here that says up in many different languages to ensure there's no confusion. So up towards my anchor point means alive. If this were to be installed down, down would mean dead, right? There'd be no resistance when we were to fall. So we'll make sure it's going to be up. So here's my anchor point. I install it with the arrow facing up. Make sure to tighten the bolt and close the latch. Now if I were to fall, resistance. If I need to move around, okay, I put my thumb through here, squeeze it, push this loop up, and I can move around because the teeth are no longer biting the rope when I move that up. But if I were to fall this way, the teeth of the rope grab dig right into it and it's not going to let you fall. And you always want to make sure that the bolt is tight and the latch is closed. I've shown up on job sites and seen painters working on a roof or on a dormer with this latch open and the bolt closed. That's definitely a safety hazard. Or the latch closed and the bolt actually unscrewed a bit. That's also very dangerous. But when, they're, uh, when the rope grabs are new, they're well greased and, you know, they, and when you're moving them around a lot, they can come a bit loose. So you always want to make sure that every 15, 20 minutes you're checking that both your bolt is closed and your latch is tight. Excellent. Okay, so now we have our ring here, we have our D-ring here, we got to connect the two. We're going to do so with the lanyard and shock absorber. So here we have our lanyard and shock absorber. This shock absorber would protect you in the case that you took a traumatic fall, something that was uh, more than eight or nine feet, for example. So if you were to fall 10 feet and you were just to stop against the rope, you'd probably snap a little bit. It would probably hurt and you might injure yourself. What a uh, shock absorber does here is release you in the case of a fall like that. So an 120 person falling uh, 9 feet is equivalent to about 900 pounds of pressure, something close to that, or pounds of weight. So when falling, if you were to take a fall like that, this would unleash or unravel and give you an extra 4 or 5 feet of distance to absorb the shock of your fall so that your body doesn't absorb that shock. So we're going to connect the lanyard here. You also have the double uh, safety system where you have to push on this side before being able to open that side. And when you're walking around the job site, you know, maybe you're moving around from different harnesses to this placement to that placement at the front of the house or back of the house, you can just sort of connect this lanyard piece here for comfort so you're not just, you know, hanging around with it and hitting things as you're walking. Or you can put it on this loop here, whichever you prefer. And so that's how we can sort of move around the job site. 
Now, when I'm time to climb, to get on uh, the roof, um, I'm gonna connect this to the ring of my rope grab. So I open the safety mechanism here, clip on, on belay, we're ready to go. And so now if I were to fall, not gonna have, uh, not gonna be able to fall much because I'm gonna have some resistance. And if I need to move around, I'm working on a ladder and painting over here and painting over here, not a problem. Okay, great. Um, so, other, other words of advice. When you're painting on a ladder, you definitely don't wanna have this rope grab down at the bottom of your feet like that, right? What would happen if we're painting, 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 having a good time, and all of a sudden we fall and we go down three feet and then three more feet? Instead, what's a better system is if this rope grab and lanyard is actually at the top, at least face level or above, above your head. Now if I were to fall, there's nowhere really to fall. Three inches, six inches, a foot at max, and I'm protected. So you never wanna have this down by your feet. As you climb ladders up and down, always ensure that your rope grab and lanyard is at the top of your head here. And with that being said, that's the important safety information that you need to have when using our fall protection system. So let's go onto the roof to paint a dormer and we can show you how we unfasten the security system to the roof and how we use it when we're actually on the roof doing some painting work.